Good morning. Yes, it's going to be at some point today 25, and that is a major heat for me. <laughs> so soaking it in, getting ready for the other end of the temperature gauge, and getting as much of it in as you can is very important for your own well-being. One of the beauties about moving to Canada is the tremendous hope that resides in this weather experience. So when the weather is good, people celebrate it. Oh, it's 25 today. Oh, we got all of 17. And then when it starts to change, and people start to say, tomorrow will be warmer. Tomorrow. Next week, I heard. So they, they don't get caught up in the dullness of the weather of that time. They just live in hope after that. So this week, you hear, it's going to be bad. They go. Yeah, but then the other week, we're going to 15 on Wednesday, and we move through. And that is a beautiful experience, and I hope and pray that people would look at life that kind of way. Things don't look so great right now, but tomorrow, <laughs> the sun will come out tomorrow, says a singer, right? So I want to remind you to live in that hope this morning as we gather and welcome welcome back donna good to have you it was wonderful to have our other musicians but i'm biased <laughs> so welcome back happy to have you back happy your surgery went well and welcome to everyone who has gathered for worship today in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god in him was life and that life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. We light this Christ candle as a sign of the light that shines in our world, a light that no darkness can extinguish. That light is Jesus. May his light remind us, us of God's presence among us and, and guide, guide us, us as we seek to follow the way of Christ. May, May the, the light of Christ shine brightly in our hearts, bringing hope, peace, joy, and love to the world. Or choral introit, Voices United 148, Jesus, remember me. Come, people of God, worship the one who listens to our prayers. We will worship the one who hears us. Come, people of God, worship the one who watches over us. We will worship the one who cares deeply for us all. Come, people of God, worship the one who offered his life for us. We will offer thanks and praise to the one who gives us life. Let us acknowledge the land together. For thousands of years, First Nations people have walked on this land. 
Their relationship with the land is at the center of their lives and spirituality. Today, we are gathered on the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, and Wendat nations, and we acknowledge their stewardship of this land throughout the ages. We seek to live in respect, peace, and right relations with them as we live, work, and worship upon their traditional territory. We are also mindful of broken covenants and the need to strive to make right with all our resolve. Our gathering here now our voice is one for two. Oh, a song must rise. as we continue worship with prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, you are the artist of the changing skies and the architect of the steadfast earth. Loving Christ, you were born to walk life's journey with us and show us God's purposes. Spirit of life, you are always moving in us and among us offering us wisdom for every choice. Creator, Christ and Spirit, we honor you in our prayers and our praise. In this time of worship, show us how we can serve you, for we seek your guidance and your grace now and always. 
Gracious God, we come before you acknowledging the power of our words. Your word teaches us that the tongue, though small, can cause great harm. We confess that we have not always used our words wisely or lovingly. We have spoken out of anger, frustration, and fear, and we have wounded others with our harshness, gossip, and deceit. Forgive us, Lord, for the ways we have used our tongues to tear down instead of build up, when we have been quick to criticize and slow to offer grace, when we have blessed you with our mouths, yet cursed others made in your image, when our speech has not always reflected your love, peace, or truth. And purify our intentions. Teach us to bridle our tongues that we may speak life and not death, encouragement and not division. Help us to be mindful of the weight of our words carry and to use them to uplift and edify those around us. Renew us, Lord, by your spirit. Let our words be seasoned with grace and our hearts be filled with your love that we might reflect your character in all we say. Set a guard over our mouths, O Lord, and keep watch over the door of our lips. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. From now on, these are the words of, the, of assurance. The Apostle Paul declared, we regard no one from a human point of view. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Through Christ, God has reconciled us and given us a ministry of reconciliation. Thanks be to God that we can all make a new start this day and every day. Amen. Our hymn of response, more voices, four or five, you are holy. <laughs> beside us, behind us, with a wave, the peace of the Lord be with you. Peace. Our seed of faith for today. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Seeds of Faith. I am Reverend Siddiqui. Let's play a little game. How much do these things weigh? We have a little puppy, a camping trailer, and a riddle. Which is heavier, a pound of bricks 
or a pound of feathers? Here are the answers. This puppy is called Miracle Millie. She's a Chihuahua and she's owned by a Vanessa Smeller in Puerto Rico. She is 3.8 inches tall and she weighs approximately one pound. An average camping trailer weighs around 5,200 pounds with dry weight. Dry weight means that there are there is no gas in it and none of the tanks are filled. And as to the riddle, if you said one pound, you are right. One pound of bricks weighs the same as a pound of feathers. But did you know that words have weight too? Some words can hit a person like a brick, causing hurt even though they aren't actually physical things. Hurtful words tend to be heavy and hurtful. When we say words like ugly and call people fat and smelly or call people names, those are words that hurt. They change a person's feelings from being happy or in a good mood to being sad or in a bad mood. Just as hurtful words have weight, helpful words also have weight. Words like lovely and fabulous and kind and saying I love you and thank you and telling people that they are extraordinary and wonderful can make people feel good. It can feel as if they have been lifted and someone who is feeling a little shy before they speak or before they do something in front of a crowd, words, helpful words, like telling them that they are good at this and they are well prepared, can help that person to become confident. So the seed for today is weigh your words. What does the Bible have to say about weighing your words? James chapter three, verses five to 12 says, it only takes a spark, remember, to set off a forest fire. A careless or wrongfully placed word out of your mouth can do that. By our speech, we can ruin the world, turn harmony to chaos, throw mud on a reputation, send the whole world up in smoke and go up in smoke with it, smoke right from the pit of hell. The tongue runs wild, a wanton killer. With our tongues, we bless God our Father. With the same tongues, we curse the very men and women God made in God's image. Curses and blessings out of the same mouth. My friends, this can't go on. Hmm, I wonder what this means. So why do we need to weigh our words? Our words can ruin a relationship. It can ruin a friendship. It can ruin the world. It can turn harmony to chaos. It can damage somebody's reputation. In other words, what we say can produce a good outcome or a bad one. Words can make you feel happy or they can make you feel sad. They can help you feel better or they can make you feel worse. Here are a few things to remember. Words are like toothpaste. Once spoken, you can't put them back. So think before you speak. Once you say something hurtful, you may want to take it back, but you cannot. Here's something else to remember. Even when you're mad, think before you talk. The words you say can only be forgiven, but they are really hard to forget, especially 
if what you said is bad. If what you said is good, then it's okay if people don't forget it. But if it's bad, it's going to stay with that person for a very long time. And here is the third thing to remember. The tongue is a small thing, but what enormous damage it can do. So how do we weigh our words? Before you speak, think. And ask yourself these questions. T, is it true? H, is it helpful? I, is it inspiring? N, is it necessary? K, is it kind? All the answers to each of these questions should be yes before you say those words. So here is the seed for this week. Followers of Jesus think before they speak. Followers of Jesus work hard at making sure that their words help and not harm. This week, watch your mouth and think before you speak. See you next week. Bye. Scripture. We will sing more voices, 108, I know your word. A reading from James chapter 3, verses 1 to 12. Not many of you should presume to be teachers, my brothers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. If anyone is never at fault in what he says, he is a perfect man, able to keep his whole body in check. When we put the bits into the mouths of horses, we make them obey us. We can turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue is also a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole person, sets the whole course of his life on fire, and in itself set on fire by hell. 
All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and creatures of the sea are being tamed and have been tamed by man, but no man can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers, this shall not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers, can a fig tree bear olives, or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. May God bless us to understand these words from Scripture. Voices United 506, take my life and let it be. Let us pray. God of wisdom, the psalmist tells us your law is perfect, making the simple wise. Send your Holy Spirit to focus our attention on your word so we may grow wiser as we learn to follow Jesus, your living word. Amen. The book of James is filled with practical wisdom for everyday living. And one of his most profound teachings is that of the power of the tongue. In James chapter 3, we hear and we are reminded that our words hold immense potential for good or for harm. And with that in mind, the question today is, how can we harness the power of our words wisely? The answer lies in learning how to tame the tongue through wisdom that comes from above. And James teaches three important characteristics of the tongue. Its power to influence, its capacity for destruction, and its inconsistencies. The tongue has the power to influence. James begins this passage with a very stern warning to those who would be teachers. He reminds us that those who instruct others are held to a higher standard because their words have the potential 
to influence many. But this warning isn't limited to teachers alone. Every one of us knows the power of words. Words that have either been poured on us or thrown at us. We know words have weight. Poured, I mean the pleasant experience of being lavished in nice words, words of congratulations, words of encouragement, words of hope, words that boost confidence are poured words. And then there are the words that are hurled, the ones that are thrown so hard that they hit to the core of our very beings, the words we never forget. We could proverbially say those words were hurled, they were hurled so hard that they left the scar where they hit. So we know the power of words. We know the words that we heard that when we were growing up that changed the course of our lives. That word from that teacher, that word from someone you trusted, either way, for good or for ill, those words changed the course of our lives. But in the same way, every one of us has influence over those to whom we speak. Friends, families, neighbor, co-workers, even strangers. James compares the tongue to a small rudder of a ship, to a bit in a horse's mouth. Though tiny, he says, these objects steer and control great forces. Similarly, our tongue is small, but it has the capacity to steer our lives. Whether for good or ill depends on how we choose to use them. In verse 2, James reminds us that controlling our words is the key to spiritual maturity. In other words, if we do not have control of our tongues, we need to grow up. If anyone is never at fault in what they say, they are perfect, James says. The reality is none of us are perfect. We all stumble in many ways, particularly in our speech. But the goal is clear. As we seek to grow in our faith, we must also grow in mastering our words. Take a moment to reflect on the words you spoke this week. Did they lift others up or did they tear them down? Consider the ripple effect of a conversation. Think of a time you got into an argument and at the end of the argument you wondered, how did we get here? It was a word, a word that had the ripple effect to transform the conversation that could have been peaceful into an unpeaceful one. Think of how you can make this week different with a choice of words and ask God to help you to grow in your understanding of the power of your speech. So the tongue has the power to influence and the tongue also has the capacity for destruction. He talks about the potential of the tongue to cause immense harm. And it's not a mistake that he uses the image of fire to drive home the irreversible nature of our words. Like a spark that sets a forest ablaze, our words, when left unchecked, lead to great destruction, he says. How often have we seen relationships shattered, reputations ruined, or communities divided because of careless or malicious words? Gossip, slander, lies, not choosing our words carefully or watching our tone, these are all products of an untamed tongue. 
And James is not suggesting that we should never speak, but he wants us to recognize the gravity of what we say and how we say it. I like the book of Proverbs because I like Proverbs. I grew up on Proverbs as a child. And one of the Proverbs that I remember very carefully, and my mother quoted it all the time, Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Uh -huh. She's right. When we fail to tame our tongues. We open the door to conflict and pain. But with the help of the Holy Spirit, we can use our words to bring life, to bring healing, and to bring unity. Third thing, the tongue's inconsistency. James points out that while every kind of animal can be tamed, the tongue remains unruly. He notes that hypocrisy is often marked in our speech. We use the same tongue to praise God and that same tongue to curse others. The inconsistency is troubling because it reveals that our hearts are divided. And remember what Jesus said in Luke 6, out of the abundance of the heart does the mouth speak. The words that come out of our mouths reflect what is inside. And if our hearts are filled with bitterness or pride or selfishness, then our speech will follow suit. You may want to argue that in anger you have said things that you do not mean. I wish to tell you that that is not true. The words did not come out of nowhere. You could not have said them if they were not inside of you to begin with. They were there. So you meant to say what you said, but you did not mean to say it out loud. And you did not mean to say it the way you said it, but you meant it. Do you, does that make sense? You meant to say it because it would not have come out if it wasn't in. But you did not mean to say it out. <laughs> and you definitely didn't mean to say it that way. So you're angry, as teenagers tend to be and they love the word hate. I hate you, because you didn't buy the very expensive sneaker that they wanted. Hate is such a wrong word, strong word for sneakers, right? <laughs> but the anger was so strong, they couldn't find a word to capture it clearly in their minds, and that was the strongest word they could find to capture their angst. So they say it, and then they have to apologize because they say, I didn't mean to say it. And I say, yes, you did. <laughs> but you were angry and you didn't filter. The tongue has these inconsistencies, but James wants us to remember that nothing that comes out of our, nothing that comes out of our mouths, nothing that we say, nothing that we do comes out of nowhere. And the challenge is to balance the two, to make sure that what's in is in the right place, so that what comes out is a true reflection of what is right. Swearing is not my thing, but I have lots of friends who swear. Part of the reason why I don't swear is because I don't have a very good swearing vocabulary. <laughs> I 
If I had it, I'm sure I'd use it. Does that make sense? <laughs> Don't hold it. Put your hand down. <laughs> so James challenges you know. us to live with integrity in our speech. What we say must be a true reflection of who we are and what we believe. And if we say something we don't mean, it means we don't have control over our mouths. The principle of T-H-I-N-K gives a particular gift that whenever we're orienting people in therapy, anger management, and so on, we emphasize this principle of a timeout. You know the timeout. You know when you have, your kids were little, your grandchildren give trouble and you take them and say, you need to sit over here and just contemplate life. Well, that timeout works for adults too. Before you speak, take a time out to think. I tell my friends who come to lectionary, do not let anyone pressure you into responding at a time when you are not ready. If you're angry, don't let anybody pressure you to talk. You don't have to. Did you know that? Don't let anyone pressure you into saying things that you do not want to say out loud. And if you're angry, if you're upset, if you get worked up and someone's pressing you, that's what's going to happen. So take time to step back. They ask you a question and you don't have an answer. Say, let me think about that. Give me 10 minutes. And you go think, hmm, how do I want to, and how do, if I'm going to say something that's not so nice, how do I say that nicely? The final verses of the passage lead us to consider the source of our speech. Thank goodness. And James uses the imagery from nature to drive home his point. A spring cannot produce both fresh and salt water. A tree cannot bear both figs and olives. Similarly, the tongue cannot bring forth both blessing and cursing if it is rooted in true wisdom. James expands that later on in the text, but I will stop there to say, if we want our words to be uplifting, to be graceful, to be helpful, we must have our hearts checked. That's the source. And if we let Jesus if we let the principles of Jesus fill our hearts with the words that are helpful, then that becomes the source from which we speak. If we allow the words and the teachings of Jesus to be the source of our wisdom, then what we produce will be Christ-centered. True wisdom transforms not just our thoughts, but our words. It teaches us to be slow to speak and quick to listen. It allows us to use our words for edification, to uplift, for encouragement, and for reconciliation. And as we grow in wisdom, may we find that our tongues get tamed because if we know better what do we do ideally we should do better watch your mouth amen
challenge his disciples to take up the cross and follow him. Whatever we offer him speaks of how we take up his challenge in our time. So we give with grateful and loyal hearts. As the offering is collected today, we will sing Voices United 585, Jesus Bids Us Shine. <laughs> Let us pray together. Generous, Generous God, you poured out your love for us through Jesus Christ, who gave up everything on the cross. We bring what we have to offer you in love and loyalty. Receive our gratitude and bless all that our gifts can do to share your love for Christ's sake. Amen. We will sing Voices United 589, Lord, speak to me as I collect the prayers, if you have any available. God of inspiration and imagination, you are the artist of our lives. You have filled your world with gifts, expressed through the creativity and dedication of many. Give you thanks for a new season of opportunity to gather in worship and witness, learning from you and from each other. Artist of our lives, awaken our gifts to serve you. Today we give you thanks for the artists among us, offering their inspiring gifts. 
Thank you for painters and poets, for lines on a canvas and lines on a page, which inspire us and leave us wondering. Thank you for sculptors and storytellers who fashion faces in stone and scenes in words to outline the profile of your truth for us. And thank you for the art on our fridge doors, artist of our lives, awaken our gifts to serve you. God of grace and goodness, we know your creativity in the arts of fabric and foodstuff, in hands that work with wood and keep machinery humming. We give you thanks for those who stitch patterns with thread and those who set patterns on our plates, mixing colors and flowers. Thank you for those who build and repair, refinish and restore the things we need and the things we cherish. Artist of our lives, awaken our gifts to serve you. God of music and movement, we know your beauty in the gifts of the keyboard and the composer, in the blending of voices and the bending of dancers. We thank you for these sounds and sights that touch our hearts once more and open our souls to praise you. We pray for artists of every kind that their work will find appreciation and support throughout our community. Artists of our lives, awaken our gifts to serve you. God of hope and healing, we thank you too for the healing hearts, for the care and relief offered by professionals in our healthcare system, and for the support given by friends and volunteers. We pray for all who seek healing, for body, mind, or spirit. Give each one your presence and peace through our prayer and friendship. Artist of our lives, awaken our gifts to serve you. In silence and in name, we hold before you those near and dear to us in thanksgiving and concern. Thank you. Awaken us to all, awaken us to all our creative potential to serve you in serving each other. Hear our prayers, silent and spoken, summed up in the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us stand and sing our closing hymn, Voices United 686. Triumphant hymn, great God of grace, God of glory.
<clears throat> on the 29th of this month, we will celebrate our 157th anniversary of this church's ministry. And so we will have a service that celebrates that. So if you remember having photographs from that time, if you want to say a few words by video to be included in that service, you can chat to me, photographs, go to Jill, and we will be trying to pull together a service that reflects and celebrates those 157 years. One of the things that marked the transition from the old building to this one was a walk. People walked down, for those who were there at that time, do you remember? People walked down, there were chairs and there were things. People walked from the old building to the new building. And so inspired by that idea of a walk and also inspired by our passion for walking in this community, we will be launching a series of walks that we have called Walk with Our Creator. And so you will hear more details about these three series of walks in our community that will move through this anniversary celebration, move into our celebration of our indigenous brothers and sisters who have become autonomous and the 100th anniversary of the United Church of Canada. So keep your ears out for walking with our creator as we move into our celebrations receive the blessings be doers of the word and not merely hearers go with these words on your hearts and may you be granted the wisdom to use your words with grace and love and may your tongue speak life kindness and truth may the god of wisdom guide you the Christ of mercy walk beside you, and the spirit of hope inspire you each day, now and always. Amen. Have a good week, everyone. Our choral parting, more voices, 224. May the God of peace. Chewy has a cat food for any cat mood. Chewy's here. Shop a variety of ears.